How are they, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between? Now, long-time viewers, I'm sure there may be one or two of you all, may remember that some years back I overanalyzed a game known as Dark Years, a game that was developed by Iranian developer RKS Entertainment. And that's right, RKS stands for something that I can't pronounce. But anyway, Dark Years was a game that's one of the rarest of birds. A game that's so bad it's good. That's right, if you're willing to put up with just about every technical problem you can think of, a bunch of graphical glitches, and well, a translation that really doesn't make any sense, then you're in for a treat. But anyway, these boys from Iran have not rested on their laurels. Because they're back, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, with a brand spanking new game that is a tribute to Seven. That's right, that Brad Pitt vehicle. Where the price of sin is death. There are seven deadly sins. Gluttony. You're going to come take a look at this. Greed. No one touches anything. Sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and envy. Yeah, that movie right there, the game's a tribute to it. And don't think I'm just saying like, oh, I think it's a tribute. It's like, no, it's in the promotional material. Look right here on the Steam page. Like, yeah, they're being as explicit as possible. So that's right, folks. Those boys from Iran that made a game that's so bad it's good are making a point-and-click adventure game that's a tribute to Seven. And not only is it a tribute, but it's a sequel to their first adventure game that I know of. Murder in Tehran's Alleys. Yeah, folks. Let's take a look at Murder in Tehran's Alleys 2016, or Murder in Tehran's Alleys 2. It seems like the two are pretty much interchangeable, even the game's own promotional material. But whatever, enough of that. Let's listen to some Iranian music that I found. Now, it may be difficult to tell, but the game opens with a gentleman smoking some meth and, well, murdering his entire family. I mean, seriously, folks, who hasn't smoked a little bit of meth, murdered their wife with an evil laughter, and then committed infanticide? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not kidding there, the game opens up with infanticide. That's how you can tell this is a dark and gritty mystery. And you can also tell it's going to be a bit weird because of, well, scenes like this. Unfortunately, imagery this cool will not be seen for the rest of the game. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that the ghoulish wife is not a recurring character. But anyway, after all of that, we just kind of get thrusted into the game. آه خدای من بازم امیری سه نسل خانواده افشار از سه نسل این آدم خبرهای بد شنیدن بهتر سریعتر جوابشو بدم yeah, in case you all can't tell, there is not a lick of English that's going to be spoken in this game. So I guess that's one way to ensure that the terrible voice acting in Dark Years isn't repeated. Hello sir, can I ask you some questions? I'm hungry. I'm too weak to answer your questions. But all joking aside and references to games that you may or may not know about, our hero right here is the great-grandson of the protagonist from the first murder in Tehran's Alleys. That's right, our hero is the grandson of a character that you've probably never heard of and know nothing about. So like how all these mystery things start off, our boss calls us in the dead of night and we're still stuck at the office because, you know, we a workaholic and we've probably taken sips of whiskey, but, well, you know, it's in Iran, they can't do the drinky poo. But needless to say, the game starts off pretty stereotypically. And by that I mean we actually have to Google the location of the place we're going to investigate the murder because, you know, easy tutorial puzzles, I guess. Oh, oh, بالاخره اومد. بهتر سریعتر اطلاعات تو پی دی ای خودم یادداشت کنم و راد. All them boys from Iran got some brass balls. They ain't using no Wikipedia. That is a straight up screenshot of Wikipedia. And no, I am not entirely sure if that's legal, but let's roll with it, folks. Because the audacity, it's pretty spicy. But okay, now that all of that's sorted and we now read the Wikipedia entry about the city we're going to, let's go to the crime scene and, you know, talk to the guy who's just standing out in front of it. He surely knows something. Salam, Sarbaz. Mmm, Kafuri. Bebinam, Sarbaz, Amiri, Kujas. Salam, Janab, Afshar. 
سرگرد امیری گفتن این سرگرد افشار هیچ موقع وقشناس نبوده All right, so so far what I gather from this plot, the dude that we were supposed to meet to help investigate this murder with went home, and I guess we're just now gonna, you know, do our own little investigation. Now, folks, if this was a movie, I would think the reason why this was done was to, you know, save on having to pay actors to actually be on set. But it is a damn video game. I don't know why they're so sparse with their characters. And I'm not kidding here, folks. For this investigation, there's only like three people to talk to, and two of them are cops. Pretty sad. Oh yeah, and speaking of the investigation, I guess I should fill you all in on what we're investigating here. Well, you see, there was a really rich dude who was rich by, I don't know, rich guy stuff. And he also liked to throw parties, and he died at one of his parties. And the only person that we can question is his wife, even though there was other people at the party, but, you know, again, character models are expensive. سلام از اون کنم خان میرج حبزده. افشار هستم از دایره جمعی. میتونم چند تا سال ازتون داشته باشم؟ And yeah, Iranian police apparently have their badges tattooed on their palms. Salam. Yeah, and salam to one of our first glitches, but very common ones. That's right, whenever characters transition between sitting and standing, there's a flash for some reason. I really don't know why, but it happens a lot, and it's kind of annoying. But that aside, this lady, the wife of the rich man, was like, Hey, yeah, the dude was rich, and he also liked to smoke a little meth. So what, what are you going to do? You won't arrest me? And we're like, well, we are the police, but we're not the moral police, so we're not interested, because that's how the Iranian police work. I mean, who knew? So yeah. Rich dude had meth parties, was killed at one of them. I guess we should take a look at the crime scene now. Ah, salam jana be doktor Shakib. Khaste nabushin. Chat khoshtib shudin. Shid emruz intori shudin ha? Vali na be nazar man shoma hamishe khoshtib budi. Yeah, we're in the middle of the room where a dude was brutally murdered, but hey, a little bit of lighthearted banter, why not? This is a gritty murder mystery after all. But as you would expect, the doctor already has a pretty good idea of what killed the guy. The dude was like force fed a bunch of meth and, well, just died. So now we're just going to go ahead and, you know, pick up anything that is nailed down and try to figure out how it's relevant to the case. And also play a mini game. Yeah, this game loves him. Huh, well that's interesting. It appears that there's a picture that was on the desk that was torn off. I wonder if it's perhaps related to the murder. I don't know, maybe we should talk to one of the guys in the photograph. Well, I'm assuming one of them's a dead guy, but the other one, maybe he's still alive. Ooh, maybe he's a killer. Hmm, but that's only circumstantial evidence at best. It's not like we're going to find a CD that has the entire killing recorded on it. من هر آن و زندگی و لحظاتم عجیم کردم و هرچی دارم از همین راهه آره حرام چون راه دیگه به خوشبختی نمیشناختم Yeah, this guy's me to committing usury Now, some of y'all may not know what that is because it's become one of the foundations of financial capital But yeah, um, according to most, like, Aramaic religions You ain't supposed to charge interest on loans because, you know, that's kind of fucked up And this guy died because of it Holy shit, hopefully they do not know about Lehman Brothers in Iran. <laughs> All right, we got our first homicide down in our seven style murder mystery here. First dude committed usury, and he also smoked meth. And also, the killer is known now. Yeah, we got a real good look at his face in that snuff film. Now, I'm no detective, but having the face of the killer and, well, a video of him actually committing the murder should make this case fairly easy to solve. And also, it's not like this dude's a stranger. We saw him in the opening cinematic. It's the same dude who killed his family. So, yeah, I think this game's plot can kind of easily be figured out now. And if you really want to get the game spoiled, just read through the game's own documentation. It pretty much tells you everything that goes on in this game. Yeah, it's a bit ridiculous. Kind of ruins the whole mystery aspect of this murder mystery. And I think our hero agrees because after watching the snuff film, he just heads on home and orders a pizza because, well, why not phone it in? Ah, uh, huh. Pizza, so now that we got a Persian pie on our way, let's go use Wikipedia again. Yes, the real Wikipedia. 
For real, this is a screenshot of the actual Wikipedia page that's shown in the game. It's for the Seven Deadly Sins because, just like in the movie Seven, our hero is going to Wikipedia the Seven Deadly Sins and then figure out that's why the killer's killing all these guys. I mean, it's a bit ham-fisted, and I'm pretty sure the game's just throwing this in to be like, well, in case you haven't watched Seven, the murderer's murdering people based on the deadly sins that they've committed. But in this Iranian version, they're also all meth smokers. It's not really a spoiler, it's just kind of of weird so the guy's killing deadly sin committing drug addicts all right let's go to bed i guess <laughs> All right, folks, not only do we have a dream sequence going on now, but we also got a flashback. That's right, this little comic book guy right here is the young detective grandson. And guess what? His dad has smoked meth back in the day. So this case has suddenly become very personal for our detective guy because he just remembered about his daddy's crippling meth addiction that has not been referenced at any point prior to this that I can remember. But then again, I was not paying the most attention to some of the text on the screen, so I could be wrong, folks. But yeah, this case has got impersonal. این پرونده داره خاطرات گذشته منو زنده می‌کنه. بهتر از رئیس بخوام که پرونده رو به یکی دیگه واگذار کنه. And yeah, our hero now suddenly just wants to give up on the entire case because meth heads are being killed and his daddy was a meth head. Okay. I mean, that's the guy's motivation. Let's not fret. Oh, and looky here, the detective has a wife, and, oh, I've seen Seven before, so, um, I kinda know what happens to the wife of game, so I am not about to get attached to her. And it ain't like the game's giving me any reason to care about this lady. I mean, she yells at the detective grandson guy for, you know, being a detective. She's like, ah, oh, you're never here. You stood out late doing murder investigations. Urgh. But also, I wasn't here. I was at my mother's, so I'm just, you know, mad at you for your job. Stereotype about every cop drama. No, the wife doesn't like the guy because he's always away and his job's dangerous. And she's mad because they don't talk anymore. But oh well. It's not like we are going to talk to this lady much. I mean, this is only the first of two times we're going to see her. And every time, it's pretty much like this. She bitches at the detective grandson for being a detective and says her mama's not doing that well. I mean, frankly, folks, they are not creating much of a sympathetic character here. So now that we got the familiar obligations out of the way, let's go to the office and enjoy one of the slowest pans in adventure gaming. <laughs> In real time, we're talking about like almost one God-fearing minute for this pan to slowly move across the screen. And it's unskippable. And yes, it happens every time you enter this office. It always pans from left to right, regardless of which entryway you get in. So there'll be some times when you're on the right side of the screen and the camera's on the left and, well, you just click and hope the hero catches up. It's fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, let's go talk to our boss, the Iranian Ringo. Jab sarang, amr farmude budin ke khidmatun berasan. Bande dar khidmatan. Salam, sargurd afshar. So yeah, this thing goes down pretty much as you could probably write yourself. Our hero's like, hey, I want off the case. And the colonel's like, no, you're doing the case. And then our hero's like, okay, you've convinced me. For real, it just happens pretty much like that. A couple sentences, our hero's like, okay, I'm fine now. I'm dropping my daddy issues. So instead, let's get back to gritty murder mystery bread and butter. So that means the colonel's going to be yelling at Detective Grandson to solve the case as quickly as possible. Keep it out of the papers. The mayor's on his Ass, blah 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 so all right now let's hit the bricks and try to solve this case i guess but as i've said numerous times before this case doesn't seem like it should be all that difficult you know just print out the headshots of the killer pass it around town say you're looking for this guy somebody's bound to know the dude and yeah open and shut case so yeah we print out headshots of the guy send it down to the identification department they'll see what they can dig up and yeah, one thing you'll notice throughout this game is that they use a lot of the same character models. In fact, I think there's probably oh, less than a dozen character models for this entire game. I mean, honestly, I may be able to count them all on one hand. 
And also, some of the models have these weird little, like, halos around their feet. I don't know why, but they're there. And it feels like a glitch. But glitches aside, this mystery is developing rather logically. Almost surprisingly so. Yeah, Detective Grandson printed out headshots of the guy from the snuff film and gave it to the identification department. So now we're just waiting for them to dig up a match. So bravo, Murder in Tehran's Alleys 2. You're logical. And I guess the logical thing to do since we have some time to kill is go talk to the neighbors near the crime scene. In particular, a real estate broker that lives right next to the mansion. Oh, manu bebakshin. And frankly, the guy doesn't say anything that we haven't already heard. The rich dude threw parties, he probably did drugs, he seemed like a bad guy. I just knew him because I, well, worked next door. But in all honesty, what this guy has to say doesn't really matter. But what he has does. Because you see, in his first aid kit, he has sleeping pills. Because, well, who doesn't keep sleeping pills in their first aid kit? But yeah, we do have to steal them. Because you see, we have to drug a doggo. Oh yeah, I didn't mention that here. There's this dog. It was owned by the dude who's dead. And uh, it wants to bite Detective Grandson here. But it's covered in blood, so our detective guy wants a sample of the blood. So rather than calling animal control or for reinforcements, he's just gonna poison a dog. So in order to get the sleeping pills, all we gotta do is play a mini game, which causes the guy, the real estate dude's, phone lines to crash, which will get him out of the building so then we can raid his sleeping pill supply. A bit convoluted, but it makes sense in a certain adventure game logic. Unlike this conversation we have with the real estate dude, which leads me to believe that yeah, this game's a little bit broken. Merci que gofti. Oh my god, that was just beautiful. It's scenes like that that make me play games like this. Ah, oh, that's just magic, folks. But yeah, we take the pills, we feed it to the dog. Oh, the animation quality in this game puts the Sims to shame. So, the dog keeled over by psychically drinking the water and was still barking even though it fell down. But alright now, folks, we can get the blood off the dog and give it to a guy. And yeah, I'm really trying hard to contain my laughter because it's just really funny what just happened. And now that we've done all that, enough time has passed that we can go back to the identification department because they have some news for us. جناب افشار هرچند تصویر ناقص بود و سیستم حسابی اذیت شد اما موفق شدیم سه مزنون رو شناسایی کنیم که شاید قاتل یکی از اونا باشه. عالی شد. عالی شد. خب آدرسش من آدرس ها رو تو پی دی ای شما مشخص می کنم. Well, that's pretty damn rad. We got three suspects, an address for each of them. So all we really got to do is waltz over there and talk to them. Also, we found a bloody rag near the doggo, and it was all tore up, so naturally, we have to reassemble it before we can head out and investigate further. I'm not kidding you, we actually have to do this before we can actually do the thing, the investigation. So now that that bloody rag is reassembled, we'll give it to the doctor who will run tests on it. And also, because we did that mini game, enough time has passed that we can talk to the identification department guy, and then he'll give us the addresses to our three suspects. Because while it wasn't very clear the first time we spoke to him, it turns out we had to wait around a little bit in order for him to find the addresses. I guess he had to use Wikipedia. But in all honesty, yeah, this game is a lot of wait and see. Kind of like this video, because this is going to be part one of two. Yeah, this game's actually pretty lengthy, so I had to divide it up to make the videos a little bit more manageable. But all right, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this, and I'll be back with part two whenever I bother to make it. So have a good day, folks.